How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Refrigerator Full of Heads. This is issue number three, and this is from DC's Black Label and Joe Hill's Hill House Comics. This is once again written by Rio Yours with art by Tom Flower, or Fowler. And this is issue three, where into the heat of the story, a lot of stuff is happening, and some things that uh, didn't make sense earlier are starting to make sense, and there's some cool reveals, and, you know, things are starting to shape up and explain, and, you know, I, I, I like it, you know. Um, one thing in regards to things that I've said about this book in the past is, as I was reading through this, I, I realized, you know, just kind of the headspace you have to be in for this book, you know, being a big fan of the original, uh, this is the Hill House comics set in the 80s, so its sequel is set in the 80s as well. I think it's just one year later. The first one was a unique take on a slasher film, but it had a backbone of the mystery and also that uh, the mythology. This one, rather than a slasher, is going for more the 80s uh, drive-in theater take, you know? So it's shifting genres, and, and it also, uh, quite unfortunately, there is some mystery, but it doesn't go as hard on the mystery as the first one. But the thing is, you know, I kind of realized I should be reading this like it was an 80s-style drive-in movie. It's kind of going for that camp and going for that over-the-topness and motorcycle gangs were uh, quite everywhere in here. I really wish they did more groundwork at the beginning to get you into the right headspace, you know, to say, hey, this is a drive-in movie. But I feel that, you know, when I got that in my head to read it like a drive-in movie, it, it made it a lot better. Um, but yeah, this is a, a really different tone than Basketful. And, you know, it is different, but it still is fun for what it is. Let's take a closer look at that cover, um, the refrigerator full of heads logo, and we get this deer carrying the severed head of the biker guy from earlier, and we do get the, turn right, you idiot, I said turn right. You know, with the uh, comedic nature of this cover, I thought this was a wacky B variant cover, but this is actually their their main one, you see, uh, 00311 so that's uh that's the main cover there um so yeah let's uh let's go ahead and dive into this story i'm not going to be doing any major spoilers but i do want to say my piece on a few of the plot points and make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what the uh story is about we open up with the the classic panels you know that the style of story goes for and we see the guy's head on the ground slowly making his way back to his boss when eventually he takes a big sort of hot rod style tumble through the forest and he winds up next to this deer and the deer will pick him up uh, interestingly with his earrings and the horn not in his mouth like the cover but I guess that's just for composition right uh, but he does get picked up and moves a lot faster. I I wouldn't think it'd be in the right direction, but you know we'll see. He's he's moving faster at least. So so that's where he is. And we move right along to what our main characters are doing. And it appears they're being visited by a cop character here. And you know if we know the police from the last series, um, yeah, there is definitely corruption here. Um, they talk to the main guy, and at first, you know, he seems affable enough. Uh, he's actually doing a really good job of, you know, being calm and keeping him from getting, you know, too angry and upset and being like, oh, hey, it's fine, we're just on vacation, and really, you know, keeping out of his idea what, uh, you know, what might be going on. But, of course, there's one speck of blood on the car that they missed, and he gets very, very angry and in a rant, and you know, you know there's something up with him. But that's where we get the, the big revelation, and this is a pre-staple, uh, you know, pre-halfway point, so I'll go ahead and talk about it. But, you know, if you want no spoilers, you can turn it off here. But I definitely do want to talk about this revelation, and it is early in the issue. Uh, but 
that's when the uh, wife comes out, but it turns out they're not really just, you know, an author, uh, and the spouse. It's actually they are uh, partners working in the Department of Defense, and they've came over here uh, specifically, you know, to find the missing axe. You know, how I said earlier, why was he writing down the license plates, and, you know, how did they know how to fight as good as they were if they were just a couple of authors? Uh, this reveal ultimately makes a ton of sense, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's one of those... Like, I look at the original basket full of heads, and a lot of those reveals, you know, were something you thought would be cooler, and then they have this kind of uh, quirky, real-world styled explanation. You know, the idea that, you know, something is revealed to actually be cooler than it is, you know, it makes sense, but at the same time, it's not like all those reveals from the original basket full. Uh, but overall, I mean, they had to definitely explain how these two knew how to fight and what they were actually doing, because it was, it was kind of obvious that something was up. Uh, but I'll leave it up to uh, you guys to read the book to see exactly how this situation with the sheriff resolves. Uh, but another major thing in this book is we do get to meet the lady that's been in charge of the whole thing. Uh, they, Her and her biker gang have uh, taken over the mayor's house and you know they're kind of wrecking up the place and he doesn't like it but she is definitely not going to leave so we get to meet the series big bad and find a, a little bit more out about her goals and it's an interesting character design and you know we don't really get to know her too much in this issue so we'll definitely see in later issues just how big of a threat you know, and how big of a, a character she pans out to be. Um, man, what was her name? Erica. Yeah. Uh, but one thing later on in the issue, I think this will be the last page I show you guys, is we do get a uh, vague idea as to what the other objects are. So the uh, the sword of Hugin and Mugen, the dagger of Finnair, and the belt of oh man, what is that? Jorgen Mander. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but you see the the crows, the wolf, and the snake, what they're made out of. And we get to find out what these two do, uh, but this one, they don't say. So the belt is kind of the, the mystery. Uh, but now we know that with the axe, there are four of them, and we know what they're going after, you know. So we get the idea how many there are. We know exactly, you know, kind of what's, what's going on. They need the last piece to complete the set. And if you have all four of them, you get the special godlike power. So, you know, th that may be introducing more of a, you know, because the last one had mythology, but there may be a heavier hand on, you know, the supernatural in this book. So that will be interesting to see, you know, in the last couple issues, just how hard it goes. I I'm not 100% sure. This is issue three. I don't know if this series is getting five or six issues. But if we're just at the halfway point and we have the promise of bigger, crazier, supernatural stuff, that would be interesting if this book, you know, turns into a superhero story or, you know, if they are going for the grindhouse. There has been a ton of B grindhouse movies that just go crazy and over the top with magical elements, you know, not grindhouse, more drive-in really, uh, but, you know, that may be where they're going for, and I'm wondering if this is going to turn into to big superhero battles by the end. It's a very different creature than Basketful of Heads, and I really think that the biggest thing is is understanding that and getting into the right mindset, you know, because, you know, for what it is, it's a good book, but, you know, if you expect the subtlety and the mystery of Baskets, you know, you're not going to really, you know, get that going in, you know, the... Joe Hill's super clever writing is in there, but this is more, hey, let's have fun and cut the heads off of biker gangs, and and yeah, it's a different creature, and you gotta know that going in, but overall, for what it is, uh, another fun issue, and I'll definitely be checking out the rest of the series, just gotta learn to adjust and, you know, know what the series is, uh, but it's interesting, and I wonder when this wraps up, if they'll put out more Hill House comics, because I've liked all that I've read of them, I have uh, more reviews for them, so I'm, I'm curious, you know, will they give us a sequel to another one of the stories, or branch out into a whole new one taking place in a different decade? 
I, I, I'd be curious, you know, so we'll see what they do later. Uh, but anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist at the bottom. That should be my Hill House Comics playlist. You can see my reviews for the past issues of the series. Uh, I also have the original Basket Full of Heads reviewed, as well as the, uh, what was it, The Deep Deep Woods? Uh, I'm trying to remember the title of that one. Uh, the Low Low Woods, that was it. Um, I do want to add more to that as well, so over time, the more reviews for the original wave will pop up as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Hill House Comics playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.